Well, owning a suite in One King West or in Sapphire Tower is primarily a real estate investment, and that is the underlying value. But there are other elements to a real estate investment. It's the management system. It's how you operate this piece of real estate. It could be a hotel. It could be an office building. It could be an apartment building. But the management and how you position and operate the real estate is what determines its long-term value. Now, what One King West and Sapphire Tower are is primarily a condominiumized hotel in a way. We've injected the services, the facilities, and the ability to rent it out in a very flexible way. So it's not just annual leasing, it could be monthly leasing, it could be daily leasing. But a very, very complex and sophisticated leasing system has been created for One King West and for Sapphire that is truly unique in the business. It would not work without outstanding locations, and that's the underlying value again of Sapphire and One King West is that prime blue chip AAA location of the buildings and the iconic nature of the architecture. But when you add that final piece, which is the management systems of the building, this makes for a truly extraordinary investment. So we're going to come back in a minute and talk about how that investment works. Okay, let's look at the numbers. Again, this is an example. This is not a specific guarantee. This is not a specific suite. This is a way of understanding how the leasing program works by simply going through an example of, in this case, a $200,000 suite, which would be largely the same as any of our studios in the building. So again, let's start with the revenue. $200 a night seems to be a very fair number for a very good quality room in a building like One King or the Sapphire. 30 days in a month is pretty straightforward. 71% occupancy is the number that we've chosen because by doing a statistical analysis of hospitality vacancy rates in Toronto, in comparative buildings for the last six years from 1998 to 2004, that was the number averaged throughout that period, which interestingly enough, contained the highs and the lows of the market. 2000 was the best market, 2003 was absolutely terrible with SARS, so that period of six years gave an average of 71% for similar buildings in Toronto. You add those up, $200 a night, 30 days a month, 71%, and you get $4,260 a month in revenue per month. $4,260 per month in revenue. Now, let's look at the costs. There are three components to the costs here. Fixed operating costs are the basic costs of operating the building, whether or not it's 50% or 70% or 90% occupied. In those numbers are included the staff, the basic operating costs, the general administration, the marketing and promotional costs, salaries of the sales staff on site, uh, the sales expenses, repairs and maintenance, again, above and beyond the condominium itself, but the hospitality costs, shall we say, the insurance, again, above and beyond the building costs, and the base administration fee for the owners, which is 165 You add them all up, and you have $824 in the fixed operating costs for the suite. Now, the next section is the variable cost. These are things that will go up and down depending on the occupancy levels in the building. Cleaning and housekeeping, laundry and supplies, outside commissions, credit cards, etc., guest supplies, the soaps, the little things you get inside the room, guest hospitality, the free breakfast in the executive lounge, Linen and glassware, I mean, linen does get stolen and glassware does break. And the miscellaneous expense, you always got to have a miscellaneous. Add those up and you've got $1,129 on the variable cost. We put aside a reserve, about 4% of the gross revenue. That is $170 there. You add them all up and you have operational costs of $21.23 in total for the building. Again, our revenue is $42.60. And that gives us an operational surplus of $21.37 per month. Now, the manager gets a 5% bonus for making a surplus. There's a little bit of incentive there to generate positive revenue. It's $107 in this case at 5%. And then we take off the property ownership costs. There's the mortgage at 6% times $150,000, 75% conventional mortgage here. There's the condo fees. And we've averaged $450, a typical base studio condo. And the taxes, again, we've used the hospitality rate, the commercial rate for a similar hotel style of building here which would be 4,500, far higher than a regular condo, 375. Add those together, 1785 for the property ownership costs. And you take all these off the 4,260 of the original gross revenue, the fixed costs, the variable costs, the reserve, the incentives, the property costs, and you have a net per month of $245 per month. So the annual net is 2,940, 2,940. That's 12 months, of course. And in those costs, remember, we did pay the mortgage, and part of that mortgage was principal reduction as well. Assuming this is a long-term hold, the average principal reduction of the mortgage is $6,000. So we add that in as a benefit, really, in terms of this investment. And we also 
have to keep in mind that this is real estate and the primary reason that people buy real estate is the incremental value. Over time, inflation increases the value of real estate. And even the banks, in fact, we got this figure from the TD Bank's study of real estate in Canada. Over the years, 3.2% was the average incremental increase. So we take that 3.2%, which has been far better in previous years, but again, averaged over long periods of time. And we have an annual cash flow of 2940. We have a mortgage reduction of $6,000. We have a property value growth of $6,400. In total, we have $15,340 effective increase, effective value of this investment in an average year. Again, this is not a specific example. This is not a guarantee, but they're reasonable figures. And what we're showing is the effective value of this investment is about $15,000 a year. Again, average and in general and over long periods of time. The equity in it, the 25% down, was $50,000 in this case. I'm not going to do the analysis and guarantee you any specific returns, but those are the numbers. This is how it works. Take a look at it, and I think it's a good reason to take a look very seriously at One King West or at Sapphire Tower as a very good part of your portfolio. Well, now here's another creative idea, and we call it the Snowbird Plan. Many years ago, I was a real estate agent. I used to show people around, and I found often that when I was showing people snowbirds around uh, empty nesters coming out of the big house and they're looking to buy the condominium, the biggest thing that bothered them was they're going to buy this apartment. It would sit there for six months empty, and that, you know, quite often they would say, "Well, that that really, you know, that seems like a bad use of our money." So we created something called the Snowbird Program. Basically, what happens is if you buy a suite in One King or Sapphire Tower, we will lease it back from you for the six months that you're away. Those six months that are otherwise gathering us, we'll lease it back from you and we'll pay the condo fees and the taxes, all the expenses for the entire year. That's right, for the entire year, including the time that you're living in the apartment. Now the catch is, the time you're away, we're renting it from you for a dollar. So in fact, it costs you absolutely nothing to live in your apartment for the rest of the year. You've got your capital tied up and safe in it, and you're off on the sunny climb. So that's the Snowbird Program. Well, again, I want to emphasize that the value of One King West and Sapphire Tower is the real estate. As they say in real estate, location, 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 and these buildings offer prime location, AAA location, blue chip location, as it were, in the heart of Toronto's financial district. The leasing systems are the icing on the cake, as it were. They provide the management and the cash flow that just makes these properties excellent investments.